uh, Senator Blumenthal. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. McCabe, let me give you an opportunity, uh, since you've been interrupted by my colleague in the midst of actually threats of perjury, to clarify any of the answers or expand on them in any way that you would like. If there's anything you have to add, uh, I'd welcome your remarks. Uh, if not, I'll turn to my question. Thank you, Senator. I think it's important to keep in perspective that the FBI opens counterintelligence cases sometimes when they suspect that someone may have had inappropriate or improper or illegal contact with a foreign power. During the course of that investigation, if you confirm that that contact has taken place, and then you learn that that person is also actively concealing the contact, concealing it from, in General Flynn's case, the FBI, and also from the White House Chief of Staff, the White House Counsel's Office, and the Vice President, your fears about a possible threat to national security are justifiably elevated. That is what happened in this case. Um, and so questions about uh, a Logan Act prosecution that never took place, uh, I think, are misplaced. Uh, that's a really uh, important point, Ms. McCabe. I gr regret that my colleague isn't here to hear it, but I'm sure he'll review the record. Uh, that We should note, I think, at the beginning that we are now in the midst of a fourth hearing to investigate both the 2016 election and the investigations and investigators who themselves have already been investigated. So we're spending all the time in the world to look back at 2016 as families and businesses in Connecticut, and I think in the states of every one of my colleagues, are hanging by a thread due to the public health and economic crises caused by COVID. This crisis has been ignored and disregarded by this administration, which is the reason that President Trump was defeated. It is a dereliction of their duty to their constituents and to the American people to continue to focus on a 2016 investigation that already has been investigated. And I think your point about the reasons for that interest in the conversations between potential Trump uh, officials and the Russian ambassador are very well taken. Uh, I also want to say that I am deeply troubled, as my colleagues are, by the statements made by Attorney General Barr, who again is acting apparently as a puppet of the president rather than a lawyer for the American people. He is throwing gasoline on the fires of false claims of fraud, fueling doubts and undermining faith in the integrity of our election process. There are no facts or evidence that justify an investigation. He knows it, but he is giving a patina of credibility to baseless and destructive accusation. I would suggest respectfully that Attorney General Barr has taken his office to a new law, and the ramifications are profound and dangerous for our country. This kind of scaremongering is no substitute for the truth. The fact is, the votes have been counted, and some are being counted. And they have shown and will continue to confirm that former Vice President Biden is, in fact, our president-elect. But in the meantime, the litigation challenging the integrity of our election process will continue frivolous and baseless, though it is, and now apparently given more credibility by the Attorney General of the United States, regretfully and unfortunately. Uh, I want to ask you about a threat to our country that is real. Just a few months ago, the FBI director publicly testified to the House Committee on Homeland Security 
that, quote, racially motivated violent extremism, end quote, constitutes a majority of domestic terrorism threats. In fact, white supremacists in particular were responsible for 49 homicides in 26 attacks from 2000 to 2016. That's more than any other extremist movement. Recent attacks include the April 2014 mass shooting at a Jewish community center in Kansas, the June 2015 mass shooting at the Emanuel AME Church in Charleston, and others. Uh, Ms. McCabe, uh, let me ask you, how long have we known that white supremacists and other far right wing extremists pose significant domestic terrorism, national security, or public security and safety threats to the United States? We've known about the threats posed to this country by uh, domestic terrorists and specifically um, uh, white supremacists and, and right-wing groups for long, many, many years, certainly long before I even joined the FBI. And one of the seminal moments in my desire to join the organization um, was when I, like the rest of the country, sat in horror um, on the day that the uh, Alfred P. Mura federal building was destroyed in Oklahoma City. So this is not a new threat. I think what's new for the FBI right now is the focus and intensity they are bringing on this problem set, which is absolutely uh, called for and necessary. And when the president yeah. makes the kind of comments that he did, and I'm sure you're familiar with them, that a particular right-wing group should stand back and stand by, do those kinds of comments have an effect on those groups and encouraging them? They absolutely do. Uh, favorable uh, references and shout outs and comments to these fringe groups have the effect of confirming their beliefs. They interpret these comments as, as signals and signs of approval and support um, and really can uh, risk uh, putting more momentum um, and kind of fervor behind what they're planning to do. Thank you, Mr. McKay. My time has expired. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh,